What if I told you the snake with the deadliest venom in the country also has no anti-venom to treat it, and that I'm gonna catch it bare-handed? I'm looking for the coral snake, a snake as lethal as it is beautiful. But most of these snakes are tiny and barely able to inflict any damage. So for you guys, I'm going big and tracking down the largest coral snake species in the country, the Texas coral snake, and putting my life on the line to show you guys just how amazing this deadly reptile really is. Unfortunately, there's no coral snakes anywhere near me, so instead of studying for the test eye of Monday, I figured driving five hours down into central Texas was a better way to earn my biology degree over the weekend. After a long drive, we arrive at the spot that might just hold the snake of my dreams and the key to making enough ad revenue to refund my gas bill. All right, we are here in our coral snake spot, finally. Nice, beautiful greenery, middle of nowhere, miles away from the nearest hospital, so what could go wrong? But uh, I'm very confident we're gonna find one. It rained last night, puddles everywhere. These snakes love moisture. And it's early in the morning. It is prime time for us to see a coral snake. But I'm not gonna lie, I am, I'm pretty worried. I've only handled rattlesnakes with a hook and uh, in terms of venomous snakes. And these are way more venomous, way harder to handle. So I'm thinking I'm up to the task, but it is going to be difficult. So we're gonna head down there, hopefully see one, hopefully see a big one, one that's handleable. And uh, with any luck, hopefully this won't turn into a bite video. So let's head on down, see what happens. Coral snakes are normally nocturnal and live underground, but after heavy rains, they're lured to the surface during the day, making these the best possible circumstances to find one. As I head down the ravine, the environment gets more lush and leads to a slow creek with plenty of shelter, perfect for hiding a deadly snake. All right, guys, we've gotten down to where I think is some really good coral snake habitat. We have a bunch of huge cypress trees, some water. And uh, come to think of it, this looks a lot like the spot where I filmed my uh, cotton mouth video. And in fact, I'm actually wearing the same shirt. So hopefully that's good luck. Uh, we're going to look along the root systems anywhere where there's moisture. They're not like a truly aquatic snake, but they do like some moisture. So we're going to scour around, uh, look in some crevices, look in some tall grass, and uh, hopefully we get our coral snake. Now, a couple of other snakes in the U.S. have more potent venom than the coral snake, namely the tiger and Mojave rattlesnakes. But because there is no coral snake anti-venom and they're incredibly unpredictable and difficult to handle, this is the most dangerous snake in the country for me to attempt to catch. But before I go into how to survive a bite and how its venom works, I have to catch one. To my knowledge, no one on YouTube has actually handled a truly monster-sized coral snake with just a hand and a snake hook. But after I see some iconic red and yellow stripes, I knew that I was about to be the first. It was a massive coral snake in the range of three feet long. Although one this size has enough venom to make it one of the single deadliest animals in the country, its size means that I can handle it properly without risk of it doubling back and biting me. Coral snakes are notorious for acting incredibly calm before striking out of nowhere. So I can't afford to be reckless. Trying to find a good angle on this snake wasn't easy. It fought me through water and wrapped itself up in a branch. But finally, as it was crawling up the side of the ravine, I got a good angle on it and went for the grab. That, ladies and gentlemen, is me holding the snake with the deadliest venom in the entire country. Look at that. Oh my God, my heart is going a million miles a minute. Look at that freaking snake. So this snake, it's unlike any other venomous snake in the country. If you're gonna get bit by something venomous, chances are it's a viper. But this is definitely not a viper. This is an elapid, the group of snakes that are the most venomous on the planet. Cobras, sea snakes, tie pants, tiger snakes. All of these are elapids, and this is the only one we have in the US. Now, out of the three coral snake species, this is the biggest. I wouldn't be able to handle the other two because they're so small, but because this guy is so long, I am able to keep my hands safe, hold them on the hook, and the fact that my skin is making contact with a snake this deadly, whew, highlight, highlight of my life. I'm glad you guys are here with me. Now right here, you guys have a great look at that color pattern. You see that red next to yellow. Now of course, there's the mnemonic. Red next to yellow kills a fellow. Red next to black is a friend of Jack, or red next to black, venom black. That's how you can be safe and tell if you're looking at a coral snake 
or a king snake or a milk snake, one of the snakes that mimics it. However, this rule doesn't always apply. If you're in South and Central America, there's coral snakes that completely break that rule, and there's melanistic coral snakes that are very dark and you can't even see the stripes. So better be safe than sorry, don't handle the snakes. I am a professional, I have been trained in how to handle venomous snakes. Even though this is the first elapid I've handled, I feel very safe. I feel safe putting it close to my cameraman and him not getting bit. So do not try this at home. Just look through the camera, I'll be your eyes. I'll do these dangerous things so you don't have to. So even if you are, whew, even if you are trained to handle snakes, you should really be careful about handling coral snakes. They look totally harmless, they seem totally chill, but these snakes are known to lull you into a false sense of confidence and then strike out of nowhere. So please guys, do not try this at home. Just look through the camera and appreciate it from a distance. Now you might look at the snake and think, why does it need such crazy strong venom? Well, it's not for what it hunts. This snake hunts other snakes. It is Ophidiophagus, that's your word of the day. These guys hunt snakes that are usually underground and fossorial, things like uh, black-headed snakes, worm snakes, brown snakes, small subterranean species, that is what this guy specializes in. But it doesn't need that crazy venom to kill that prey. It uses its venom to defend itself. So if you see this guy, the only way that you are gonna get bit by the snake is if you're harassing it. The people who get bit by coral snakes are the people like me who try to handle them and make a mistake. So if you guys see one, let it be, let it go through nature, and you are gonna be totally fine. These snakes aren't out to get you. Look, if he's not trying to swing around and bite me in the face, just be respectful and you should be totally safe around the snake. Just look at its pretty colors from a distance and take in the beauty of nature. So what happens if the deadliest venom of any snake in America is injected into your veins? Well, believe it or not, it's not gonna hurt. You're gonna feel chillin'. In fact, for a few hours, you will have zero symptoms, and that's why these bites are so dangerous. You may think it's a dry bite, that you're totally fine. But a few hours later, you're gonna feel euphoric. Oh my God, I'm having an amazing day. That is a result of the venom. After that, you're gonna start feeling nauseous, feeling a little off, and then that neurotoxic venom is gonna work its way into your body, and you're gonna start being paralyzed. Now, that doesn't kill you in of itself, until it reaches your lungs and your diaphragm. Your diaphragm is the muscle that allows your lungs to expand, allows you to breathe. So the second that muscle is paralyzed, you are screwed. And what makes this snake even deadlier is that there's no antivenom. So you may think you're totally just a goner. However, if you are bitten by this snake, the thing to do is to stay absolutely calm, slow the flow of that venom into your body. You don't wanna wrap it with a tourniquet. You don't wanna put ice on it. The least the less you do, the safer you will be. Just be calm, get to a hospital, call ahead, tell them you got bit by a coral snake, and they should take care of you. If they try to give you anti-venom, tell them, hey, there's no anti-venom. What you need to do is make sure my lungs are not paralyzed, maybe put you on a ventilator, and either way, you have a 90% chance of survival. Even though this guy's venom is so dangerous, it, it, it's a small snake. If you look at this guy's head compared to something like a water moccasin, its venom glands are tiny. It is not gonna inject a lot of venom into you. So even though it's super deadly, it's not a lot of venom, and you have a 90% chance of survival. Well guys, I am so happy you were here to join me on the highlight of my snake catching career. I've caught cotton mouths on the channel, I've caught rattlesnakes, but this is by far the coolest thing, a freaking coral snake. And I didn't get bit, yet at least. We're gonna release them in a sec. But thank you all so much for joining me. I hope you learned something about this amazing snake. Look at it from a distance, be safe around it. And if you're bit by this guy, I hope you remember what I said and you can stay safe. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for letting me catch you and not screw me over. Have a great day. I'll see you next time.